I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, as always, and I'm joined today with a, a big group of marketeers to my left, Preston Lentford, and then across the table, we got Matt Ritchie and Judge Jarzinka. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Pleasure as always. Yeah, excited to have another conversation. Yeah, another good conversation too, and it's pretty topical based on what time of year it is. You know, we're right here mid-February, coyote breeding season is on. And uh, there's no better time to be calling coyotes, and it's it's a lot of fun, especially when you get the opportunity to beat them at their game, and they're pretty smart and pretty pretty cagey creature. And you know, the coyote hunting, at least for a lot of us here out on the prairie and 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 you know the west, and really just all over the country for that matter, coyote hunting really is just a cultural thing. And you know, sometimes I forget or I just take for granted that we live in a hunting and shooting culture and uh, it's it's wonderful i was just at a a wrestling meet here for my my kiddos here and uh the guy that was running the meet uh phil Payne over there in uh, utica uh stopped and we were chatting and you know we're at a wrestling meet for our kids and we're talking hunting and that culture uh is just it's cool to be a part of and it's great to live in a state and in an area geographic region that supports it so much and coyote hunting is one of those deals if you're a deer hunter you're probably a coyote hunter. If you're any other big game type of hunter, you're probably also a coyote hunter, but there are certain coyote hunters that are just die hard. That's what they have. They, they don't hunt big game anymore or they don't hunt big game at all, but you know, they're out fixing fence. They got the 243 with them or something, you know, they're always prepared for a coyote. And again, they are smart. So let's, let's dive into this here. Let's go into, you know, kind of first what bullets do we have that are really suited to that coyote hunt? What bullets will work? Maybe uh, what lines of ammo are, are are really well suited for that? And then I want to know everybody's favorite coyote cartridge, or maybe what you would consider as the best coyote cartridge, which is always controversial anytime you start throwing the best in there. But for each different scenario, maybe each different rifle platform, there might be a best um, you know, you never know. So when we start looking at varmint bullets for Hornady that I would recommend for a coyote hunter to start way back at the beginning, 22 caliber SPSXs, you've got the Spire Point Super Explosives. Now that bullet goes back many, many decades, probably almost 60 years now. I'm not sure when we came out with our first one. But probably not long yeah, after. I would say 60 years. Yeah. yeah. We're a 75-year-old company, and I bet within the first, you know, 10, 15 years, we had a 22 cal SPSX out there. And although that bullet often gets overlooked now, we don't load it in factory ammo. It's still a pretty good option for the hand loader. It's fantastic. Th- those things are crazy accurate, too. Mm-hmm. If you ever got a questionable barrel system, whatever have you, throw in the SPSX, and it'll probably shoot. <laughs> <laughs> So before we go too far, you know, what makes a bullet a good varmint or coyote bullet? Yeah, you know, what, what goes into that? I think a, a big one is accuracy, like Preston mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And then design, you know, they typically have very, very thin jackets, lead core, of course. So, uh, fur friendly, I guess you would say. And, and the tinier, the tinier bullets, in my opinion, I think, are a little bit more fur friendly because when you have so much mass impacting a coyote, even if it is a little bit more fragmenty, yeah, if that's soft, a word, yeah, right? Thin. If mm-hmm. it's got a bunch of mass, the chances of an exit are probably a little bit greater. So I think that's why a lot of guys gravitated, yeah. you know, twenty-two, two hundred and fifty with a fifty or fifty-five grain SPSX. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, an explosive bullet going at. Some pretty dang high velocities. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in years past, you know, it's not that case anymore, but you wanted to save the pelt. They were worth decent money. Yeah. There were times you were getting north of $100 for uh, a, a good furred up coyote. Now, now they're not worth a penny, um, which is unfortunate, but saving the pelt was huge. So you wanted that violent expansion. You wanted that bullet to stay inside. You only had one hole. So that's a good point to bring up. You do want a bullet that one is accurate because you got to hit what you're aiming at. Two, you want 
generally I would think you'd want a lighter bullet for caliber because you want the higher velocity where you got a, you know, a dog coming in, maybe he, you miss your first shot and you're shooting him on the run. You want a flat trajectory. Well, and back that, then they, there was no range. There was not yeah. Back when, yeah. Yeah. You didn't want to have to lead them that much either. If they were running across, you know, crossways. So yep. you wanted something flat and fast. Yeah. Like so. a good skeet shooter. Yeah. It was all range <laughs> estimation. Four stand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, like Preston mentioned, the design, the thinner jacket going to come apart quickly. You know, that's an ideal varmint bullet, you know, say for a coyote. Um, and we'll talk about it. Judd, I know you're in this camp. Sometimes the ideal coyote bullet is the one that's in your deer hunting rifle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever's close to me, that that's what I'm grabbing. Yep. Yeah. Well, then we progressed a little bit. I don't know if you're ready for this yet, but from SPSX to VMAX. But yeah. that was decades later than, you know, further down the road. It was, you know, those those really thin hollow points, which, you know, back in the day, that was another option to get this big open me plat hollow point with a really thin jacket. Yep. That did well. And then, and yeah, between 1994 and 1996 was really our development into what became the VMAX. And the VMAX, at least in our era, that's a go-to. Yep. That, I mean, that that's all I've grown up hearing is VMAX, VMAX, yep. VMAX, VMAX. Yep. Yep. yep, for sure. So, and we grew up in an echo chamber here in Nebraska. We're, you know, we're the hometown team, so a lot of people out there, you know, running red in their rifles, which we appreciate. But I was the same way, you know, as... You got a load you're working up for a coyote. It's the VMAX. Yep. And not to overlook that, those hollow points, because like Les Johnson, one of our guys, mm-hmm. you know, obviously very, very well-known Predator Quest, he st- still, I believe to this day, runs a 52-grain boat tail hollow point in a 22-250. Mm-hmm. And he just loves it. Yeah. Match accurate, and then they come apart like it, uh, he wants them to, I guess. Yeah. Yep. And that's, yeah, a, a good bullet. And the VMAX... Where hollow points can can sometimes fail you is if they expand the same way every single right. time because of how that hollow point is formed and and if it gets clogged up with a tipped bullet like a VMAX, you have that polymer tip driving rearward into the bullet and it almost appears you know that that bullet expands from the inside out and just comes apart and it's yep. it's a uh, dramatic to say the least and if you had no other bullet but the VMAX. You really wouldn't need to look for anything else. It's a darn good coyote bullet. Yeah. But then we, I don't know, we last even, year, yeah, <laughs> went ahead and came out with the ELD VT. Yeah, the which VT. Which is just incredible. It really is. Um, talking high ballistic coefficient, but lighter weight bullets. Yep. You know, they look like a piece of spaghetti, but they don't weigh as much as a piece of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. You, you get everything you want. I want to shoot stuff far away. I want a long boat tail. I want a long ogive. I want those ballistics, but I don't really want a really heavy bullet. Enter VT. Yep. You get the best of all the worlds. You get the long ogive. You get the long boat tail. You get the, the good shape of a long range bullet, but we knock the weight back so they're light for length. Maybe not necessarily light for caliber in all aspects, right. but they're light for bullet length. Yeah. And those things... For the modern hunter, I'm going to call it the, the modern coyote hunter, when you're not solely reliant on hot, nasty speed, you're, you know, you're using modern cartridge design, modern twist rate, modern throat, modern throat design in your chamber, that those bullets, they just, they fit every category that I just mentioned. They're exactly what you want. So if you're shooting in modern cartridge, 22 arc, 6 arc, the Creedmoors, et cetera, et cetera, or if you, you know, you get into something really weird like a six millimeter remington ackley or something you get a custom yeah, chamber made that, uh you know then you could you could use those bullets with your custom chamber and your custom twist rate and they fly great they're really good in the wind that's the big one where some of these legacy bullets we've been talking about just kind of leave a little bit to be desired is they're not typically the best in the wind when you compare them to something right like the new vt well, and what's cool about them is, is if nobody's heard, if, if somebody's listening to this that hasn't heard of the LDVT, we've knocked the, the lead core back dramatically mm-hmm. inside of the bullet. So A number one, it changes your center of gravity and center of pressure relationship, which just aids in bullet accuracy in this case. Uh, the ballisticians really figured that out. But Judd is the high speed film and guru here at Hornady, right? So I get to watch and, uh. <laughs> 
The it, these VTs come apart like a V Max in a block of gel. It's it's incredible. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah. Well, bit. just from the camera side of things, yeah, it's one of those things when we shot that on high speed and played back the footage, it's just one of those uh bullet impacts that just makes you go Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, so. we should, if we can maybe overlay some of that video for yeah. our YouTube watchers, well, and it's awesome. We'll overlay one here, uh, right about now that what, what's kind of cool with this gel is if you take a thinner piece, right? When you shoot a full length ballistic gel block, like know, a 50 pound block. Yeah, like obviously say. your temporary wound cavity is there. You see it on high speed and then it comes back. Well, Judd, you, you took a, a chunk of it, I believe, and just shot a little chunk of it. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember like if it was eight like, or ten I don't or... even know if it was that, four or five inches. Yeah, wasn't it? and then that thing comes apart almost to the point of it completely like ten, breaking yeah. apart. Yeah. And then it comes back, but we'll overlay that. Yeah, footage well, and that's, now. I was using that analogy to describe to somebody with these new bullets and with the VMAX, but with the VTs, that thing is going to inflate that animal to the size of a beach ball, theoretically, and then collapse it back down to normal in microseconds. Yep. Yep. You just... You don't see it, right. but it's happening. Yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. And that's where you get that instant incapacitation. You get that dramatic anchoredom right there on the spot. Yep. And uh, also, as a corollary, it's it's also one of those things that helps you with you make that bad shot. If you're, if you're a little bit back on your shot... You still get that huge temporary wound cavity and that material in there, you know, lung tissue, let's say it can only expand so far before it just lacerates and you can do a yeah. lot of auxiliary damage, even if you kind of miss the mark on a bad shot. Yeah. And, and VMAX ballistic gel shots are very, very similar, I would say. Yeah. Well, I was kind of going to even go in. I think we talked about this maybe on the CX podcast about the antelope you shot mm -hmm. and the sound it made on yeah. impact. Uh just doing thermal hunting before I had a handheld, you know, you had one gun. So my wife and I, or buddies and I, we'd take turns. So the other guy that couldn't see through the uh, scope, you're just listening. Yeah. And the sound, I would say the VMAX or just varmint bullets in general almost make a different sound too. Just the pop yeah. they make on impact. So it was kind of neat. Just you're sitting in the dark and you hear that. Oh, yeah, you got that <laughs> got one. Him. Yeah, 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 he's can, dead right there. You so. can hear that. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of neat. We, we just returned from a, a coyote hunt media event here in Wyoming, and the we were shooting the new uh, 22 arc with the 62 grain VT load. Man, it was that very audible when you, when there was an impact, everybody knew it. It was yeah. uh, almost a wet thud, if that makes sense. I mean, yeah. it was distinguishable to say the least. And the last bullet I want to mention is the ELD match. Now we don't recommend that for big game bank big game hunting. Excuse me. Uh, for obvious reasons, really thin jacket. There's no mechanism to control that expansion. Uh, and, and like I said, that jacket is thin to the top, to the bottom, and it's yep. just super thin. Now on a varmint, something like a coyote, those V or the ELD matches tend to do pretty well. And I've shot quite a few coyotes with, uh, the 108 out of a six millimeter arc, uh, or a six millimeter Creedmoor, uh, maybe a 75 ELD match or 73 out of a 223. Um, but, uh, that's another option, you know, if you don't have a dedicated varmint load or, if, you know, you got maybe your match rifle. Sure. Just an easy fit. Judd, okay. you've probably laid down a few in the old Ruger. Yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely have. And I, that's just, that's what that gun shot. So on a coyote, that's what I, I took. And yeah, probably have shot more coyotes with my 6.5 Creedmoor than I probably have with my 223. So mm -hmm. yeah, but certainly gets the job done, but it now does. that the ELD VT exists, you better have both. I think you, you know? should have both, yeah. And there is something to be said about the, the VTs, you know, the higher muzzle velocity, the flatter trajectory, and inside of practical distances, you know, the wind, you know, you're going to get better wind uh, deflection out of an ELD match than you would a corresponding VT bullet. But, you know, again, at practical distances, it's, it's pretty negligible. Yep. Yep. The Hornady Click Adjust Bullet Seating Micrometer. Precisely set bullet seating depth with click adjust in one thousandths of an inch increments and easy to read graduations. It's a quick and easy way to achieve bench rest accuracy and consistency with tactile clicks just like a click adjust scope turret. Easily installed on Hornady custom or match grade seating dies. 
take your reloading game to the next level with the Hornady Click Adjust Bullet Seating Micrometer. So uh, that kind of wraps up what I would recommend as our, you know, coyote bullets. But we did mention, and, and Judd seconded this one, sometimes it's whatever you're hunting with. You know, if you're on an elk hunt or a deer hunt or an antelope hunt, Sometimes that ELDX is just enough medicine for a coyote or an interlock or an SST. I'm sure there's plenty of bow hunters listening that have flung many an arrow at a coyote. (laughs) Probably (laughs) some around this table, actually. Who knows? Probably had their string jumped many a time. Yeah, (laughs) because those things are... Yeah, they are fast. So, shifting gears now from coyote bullet to coyote ammo line. We've got a few lines of ammo that just make it easy for the the coyote hunter if you're just buying factory ammo. You go right to the shelf there and you can grab it. And uh, let's talk about those lines of ammo and then we'll get into the best cartridge. Because I think there probably is a best. Yeah. For different scenarios. Yeah, but we'll decide. Yeah, we'll <laughs> talk about it. So first and foremost, you come right out of the gate. The Hornady Varmint Express. Varmint Express, the classic. That is the classic. You know, if you look at our ammo lines, we've got a lot of lines. And one of them is the Hornady Custom. And it's in, you know, the cardboard craft face box and that hornady custom is really supposed to be you know the quality of custom loaded ammunition factory produced and the varmint express line of ammo is in that same vein it's going to be your tried and true staples that is custom loaded quality but in a factory ammo line that's going to feature you know largely that v max bullet mm. so if you're a, a varmint hunter out there you want to shoot the v max bullet that's a given that Varmint Express, traditional velocity, incredible accuracy, really some some home run options yeah. and, in that and lineup. Traditional cartridge offerings in yeah. the Varmint Express line, 223, you know, 22, 250, stuff like that. Triple deuce. Yeah, 243. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the the traditional offerings, I would say. I don't think 243 is No, it's is not. Now that I look, it's not. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Get, Super performance, we'll yeah. get to that. 220 Swift. Yeah. Hello. I'd go Hello. Even, even down to the rim fires. I can't speak so much for coyote hunting with my 17 HMR, but raccoons, 17 grain VMAX, mm. yep. hard to say how yep. many I've piled up for that. I've not done it, but I've heard many a story about, you know, coyote getting a 17 yeah. uh, HMR in the ear hole uh, <laughs> and probably pretty darn effective. When, yeah. I ta- when I was taking my kids when they were younger, I always strung along my 22 mag with the 30 grain VMAXs and um, wasn't expecting them to ever maybe get a shot off at a coyote, but they, they felt like they were doing something because they had that gun with them. So, yeah, you yeah. know, they get them oh, a set of shooting it. sticks and yeah, it I think it'd do it for sure at a hundred yards range again. and 30 grains. You yeah. bet. Yep. Yeah, but oh yeah. Yeah. Conservative range. So again, that Vermin Express, that's the easy button. You know, our, our design team did an awesome job with that packaging and the logo. And if you knew nothing about Hornet DM and you went to a store, because I'm going to go coyote hunting, and you saw that on the shelf. That's a no-brainer. And again, from 22 Hornet and Triple Deuce all the way up to 6.5 Creedmoor and 6 Creedmoor. Um, that's, you know, you got your 243, you've got all that stuff. Well, a lot of Creedmoors out there. Yeah. You take yeah. your deer rifle, throw in the Varmint Express with, uh, you know, we've got an 87 grain VMAX for the 6 and a 95 VMAX for the 6.5. That's another easy button. You pick up some velocity. And you're going with that tried and true VMAX bullet. Yeah, I think first coyote I shot when I was working here at Hornady was with a 95 grain VMAX out of a six, six five three more. Yeah, the hell <laughs> shot really good. Yeah, that's like a long shot or longer shot. Three hundred and sixty five. Yeah, Jeez. I remember that. That was nice. Yeah, on the run. Well, no, I think I got him stopped, but yeah, yeah. So shifting gears from Off sticks Varmint Express, uh, you'd go to the hot rod. Sure. which is similar to the Varmint Express, a few more cartridge options, but it's the Superformance Varmint. And the Superformance, now we're talking some speed, which is kind of, you know, that goes hand in hand with Varmint hunting is you want high velocity. And the Superformance delivers that in spades by way of Superformance propellant. Yep. And, and one thing I, I do want to mention, one of the favorite of this entire line is the 223 with the 53 grain VMAX. Mm. I know, Judd, you can talk about it, but I do want to throw it out there. A lot of guys will be shooting those out of their gas impingement systems, right? What you do want to note is is you definitely want either a longer barrel, rifle length gas system or something like that, or an adjustable gas block. Sure. Because that super performance propellant in there 
doesn't increase peak pressure, but it makes that peak pressure last longer, which can really have an effect on dwell time of the system. So you might get some pressure signs, but really it's it's timing. So I do want to throw that out there as a little yeah. caveat. Make sure, don't just throw that in a carbine length to five, yes. five, six, you know. Yeah. Or you're going to have to try it and your mileage may vary. And if you haven't, jump onto the podcast i forget the number but we talked about how to tune your gas system yeah. and some tools you can use to to dial that in uh and that's a great point because yeah there is not more pressure there's just more gas volume and it maintains that pressure longer so uh, you definitely want to be mindful of that adjustable gas block makes it easy. makes it easy yep mm-hmm. very yeah. much so yeah and amongst that whole lineup you know from 17 hornet all the way up to 243 winchester i've got some favorites in there but i think Judd, you, like you mentioned, the 223 with the 53 grain VMAX, I know a lot of people that that is their go-to. You one of them, Jeff Nimnick being the other, yeah. I believe. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I, I picked that up, but when I got my first uh, AR-15 223556, that was just the load I, I went with. And ever since then, you know, within a couple hundred yards and in, it's impressive how hard that 53 grain VMAX hits. Yeah. You know, it just stones a coyote yeah when out of a 24 inch barrel it's doing nearly 3500 feet per second mm. so it's mm. absolutely screaming and when uh, uh our assistant director of engineering joe Thielen, when he designed that bullet he put a little bit of boat tail on it and he put every bit of ogive he could and still make it work with the 223 you know cartridge dimension limitations and it's got a g1 bc of 0.290 and you don't even get close to that till you're north of 60 grain bullets. Wow. So you get really good drag characteristics and really high velocity. That, that's another one of those ones that, well, Joe wanted it. Yeah. So Joe made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't because, yeah. Oh, thank you, Joe. Th- yeah. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Appreciate it. Just like a lot of our, our cartridge and bullet innovations, just like the V-Match, which we'll talk about in the ELD VTs, a lot of that stems from, well, I, I'm, I'm, I have a, a, a small gap in my performance that man this product would really fix and if you're an engineer at hornady or on the new products team or you know you got good friends that work in engineering <laughs> well, they can make it the product and wow it works maybe everybody would like this and that's another example yeah. of that turned into a home mm-hmm. run it really did and some other notable cartridges in the super performance varmint line i want to talk about without getting deep into the cartridge but uh this is where you're going to find the 204 ruger and the 204 ruger designed by former uh, senior ballistic scientist Dave Emery, that thing is, it takes full advantage of the super performance propellant. It's doing a 32 grain bullet at 4,200 feet per second. I mean, Mm. that is just coyote medicine. And at Mm. traditional distances, it's, it gets there right now. Does blow around in the wind a little bit, uh, being a 20 Mm. caliber, but man, uh, if the wind's not super gusty or if it's at, you know, 300 yards and a few hundred yards. Don't worry about it. It's <laughs> remarkable. Um, and that's also where you're going to find some 22 to 50 loads that are doing, you know, all the velocity. And we'll talk about this one, but the 243 Winchester. After we did the 243 Winchester podcast, I said, I'm getting a barrel to shoot 58s out of. 58s <laughs> at, at uh, all the speed, almost four grand. <laughs> I'd have yeah. to look, man. Yeah, they got to be. They're doing 39.25 from a 24. Um, so some awesome options there. Well, I would say another perk before we move on, mm-hmm. the super performance side of things is, and we mentioned this before, but the night hunting with the thermal sure. and knowing yep. your distance, it, these are, are laser flat. So, you know, it just helps out if you don't have a range finder on your thermal, that, yep. that old hair and you got yourself a coyote. Yep. Oh, that's, that should be our tagline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you get a t-shirt made of that. <laughs> yeah, super performance. Go. Old hair and you got yourself a coyote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, that's yeah. true though, and and having just come back from this trip that I was on, we were doing day hunts and night hunts in an area that I'm familiar with, but not familiar enough that I can go, oh, I know where I'm at, and I know that that hillside is however far away. Mm-hmm. There was there was some coyotes that are probably missing the hair off the top of their back because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that was 250 or 300, and as it turns out, more like 150 or 200. Yeah. And uh, having a range finder could be that that you know that make or break and if you don't got one like this uh pick up the speed flatten the trajectory it's win-win all the way around so yep. moving from that's sp- better than holding hair though yeah. that's great yeah you, well, don't have to you, think about you, it. you always got to leave some for seed though you can't kill them all so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> he uh, never would. Yeah. <laughs> so going uh, from Super Formance Varmint, um, I'm going to talk a, briefly about our black line of ammo um, before we talk about V-Match. So the black line of ammo, really we needed a place, an ammo line to hold a lot of cartridges that are just really popular for the gas guns. Now you can use black in pump actions and bolt actions and, and really anything, um, but we really make sure that they're going to work in gas guns. And there's some bullet options in there that depending on what cartridge you're shooting might make it easy. We have some hollow point and some boat tail hollow point loads that we talked about earlier might not be the best option, but you know, can be effective. And we've even got some VMAX options in there uh, in the in the black line. Yeah, three three hundred blackout is the one that sticks out to me. Yeah. I, I was just gonna hit on that too. As I look through this list, I need to make that a goal. I don't know if I'll get it done yet this spring, but maybe next fall, that one ten V Max and mm-hmm. three hundred blackout, that would be pretty sweet. To, so press especially yeah. there. The bull gun there quiet, quiet. Yeah. yeah. So super fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, probably seven, eight, nine years ago when the blackout got really, really popular. Imagine if you just you have one AR and that's three hundred blackout. There's a load there for you. you yeah, out. absolutely. You don't have to sacrifice. We've been, we're going to have something in there for you. And uh, moving now to our brand new product line and kind of, you know, maybe a flagship product line, if you will, depending on what cartridges you're shooting, is the V-Match line of ammunition. Again, right here front and center for the, for the YouTube watchers here. Uh, again, our design team did a fantastic job with the design of this. Uh, and it uses exclusively that VT bullet we've been talking about, which is that hybrid long range target shooting bullet. You can shoot matches with it. Uh, and it's also purpose built to be really effective on varmints as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so V match V for varmint match for match shooting application. And if you're shooting a 22 arc, a six arc, a six, five Grindle, a six Creed or a six, five Creed more that V match line, you're going to get all kinds of velocity and you're going to get the, really the the most advanced varmint bullet on the market uh, as far as external ballistics to spare, rapid expansion, less wind drift. I mean, there's just a lot of good things going on with the V-Match line. Yep. Well, and it's in Ford off. The ELD VTs are in Ford off. So, you know, coyotes are smart. A lot of them like to hang up. They might not be so lucky anymore. That, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. my draw. I can, I can have a Ford off profile mm-hmm. and dial that scope on out. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to yeah. get out and use that. And, and to get a little bit nerdy, you know, BCs are one thing, and they're good at one range and one speed, right? Yep. What I love about them being in forward off is if I need to do a comparison, and I probably should have done that before we came on this podcast, because I'm pretty sure you're going to ask us what our favorite Coyote cartridge is, since that's the title of this podcast. Mayhaps. But... It'd be interesting to compare like a, a six Creedmoor 80 grain VT versus a 22 Creedmoor 62 grain VT or something like that because you're actually using the drag curve of those particular bullets. You're not just putting in a, a BC, a BC that's good which, at one range. So you're getting the, the whole trajectory of it and you'll be able to get a little bit more accurate comparison. Yeah. Which is, mm. I use Ford off for comparisons a lot. Yeah. Well, it does give you an actual look at the drag of the bullet versus. Yeah, BC dependent on yeah velocity and temperature mainly, uh, and yeah they vary because temperature and velocity vary all the time. Uh, and yeah, twist rate comes into play and a whole bunch of other things that affect the drag on the bullet that BC just doesn't get. Doesn't account for it. Nope. And so yeah, it's hard to know. You know, are you comparing you know brand X whose BC was done at Mach two point two five versus brand Y and that you know they do their BCs at Mach two and. It just, yeah, it doesn't give you the full picture. Um, but yeah. that Ford off, like you mentioned, Judd, you can know that that's the actual drag of the bullet. You can dial your scope in, you can set up a zero angle. And then at any distance, like that coyote that hangs up at 500 yards, you don't have to. Oh, I, got the, I got the phone over here. I got some medicine for you. You just stay right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've all been there. You know, the coyote, you see, you see him and then he sits down and like, yips. It's like, no. He yeah shows over here calling the airstrike yeah <laughs> dial her up yep well that V match line traditional velocity this is not super form it's propellant it's traditional propellant for traditional velocity but because of the VT design you do get a little bit higher muzzle velocity and you get again the external drag characteristics on the bullets that mm. that really lend themselves to long range shooting and the the ELD 
VT bullets are held to our match accuracy standard. So if you're shooting ELD match bullets, um, they're held to the same accuracy standard. So you're not sacrificing anything. Yeah, and and guys are probably hunting, waiting for a snowstorm, right? This is going to be great. And freezing temperatures, well, they're bored. They want to go out hunting at 50 degrees. we got temperature staple powders Absolutely. in the V-match line. Yep, we definitely, you know, put that into consideration. We try to do that across the lineup, but... Uh, some skews get a little bit, uh, you know, like super performance. We're leaning towards the sign of velocity. Certainly, we load it safely, and we're not using propellants that are horrible. But the V match line being held to that match standard, you know, we, we're going to put premium propellants in there that do have really good temperature stability, great accuracy. This is the ammo we were exclusively using on this media event I was on last week, and the 22 arc with the new V match, the 62 grain bullet, it is flatter than you think. Uh, that was, I heard that come out of one of the, the media attendees mouths was, yeah, missed one right across the back at, you know, at 300 and whatever. Uh, it's flatter than you wow. think. <laughs> yep. So that's something to be said there. And again, all things that are good from the V match line. I love the new bullet. I love the cartridge options. I love the bullet weights. Uh, and again, that audible tone when they get there, yeah. oh, that's confidence inspiring. Um, Hornady Security Mobilis Safes. Discover the ultimate solution for safeguarding your valuable equipment with Hornady Security Mobilis Safes. Offering an innovative modular design, Mobilis Safes can be easily transported and assembled piece by piece in any room. Featuring a full square lock interior organizing system that maximizes storage space with countless storage configurations. Elevate your security with Mobilis Safes from Hornady Security. Lastly, uh, I just wanted to circle up here before we move into cartridges. Amongst all of this ammo line, we do have some shotgun offerings, which we didn't, you know, we're really not addressing here. But for the listener out there, we do, uh, you know, a, a double up buck and a, what is it, a BB load in the heavy magnum yep. uh, for those shotgunners out there that are getting those coyotes in close. Yeah. And, yeah. and some, some guys that take the coyote hunting real seriously. I mean, they'll always have a shotgun with them. They, mm-hmm. If they get them in the shotgun range, they've they've won, right? They've won the battle. That's they, a hard battle to win. I've had the opportunity one time. I've, I've shot one coyote with a shotgun. And the way it usually goes is you'll carry your shotgun yeah. and your rifle all day long. And then the one stand, like, ah, I'm Not leaving even the shotgun. No, That's right. when you get the opportunity. So I've, I've been able to time that up one time. Mm-hmm. And the reason, you know, I guess... This probably goes into our cartridge talk, but mm-hmm. it depends the the area you're hunting. Sure. I went into the timber and that's it. And I took the shotgun and the shotgun only. This is what I'm getting it done with. And that was the one time I actually had a, a coyote come in Heck close yeah. and got it done with the with the shotgun. But that is beautiful. Cool. And that was I think the uh the double B is what I used on okay. that coyote. Yeah. Yeah, three inch heavy mag. Yep, yep. Yep. I've honestly never shot a coyote with shotgun. I've had some close enough to do it. But again, just I got the rifle. Yeah, yeah. I've taken yep. a shotgun along. I've never used it though. Not that I do a whole lot of coyote hunting, yeah, but yeah, I've carried it one time. I am an expert at this because I'm here on this podcast. <laughs> 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 all right. So moving from lines of ammo, lines of bullets, we've got that all you know established. This is what bullets we're we're working with. This is the lines of ammo we're working with. Plus, you're a hand loader. Let's get into what you guys might think some of the better cartridges are we could start with a broader what are some of the better cartridges and then kind of whittle it down because i think there's a right answer for a certain set of scenarios yeah i mean mine is definitely scenario based oh yeah i agree with that i mean i think we have to probably start with the 22250 though as the benchmark standard you gotta start right in the middle yeah i've been doing it for decades yeah yeah Yeah. i cut my teeth with the 22250 old remington 788 50 grain V maxes. That's all the lugs on that. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a lot of them, but, but yeah, it, you cannot not mention that cartridge. So, yeah. well, and that was really, you know, ahead of its time, if you will, it was, okay, you're going to take these little bullets. We're going to send them real fast. And it caught on the reason it was ahead of its time. That idea wasn't ahead of its time at all. It was just how fast and effective it was and how much it caught on that wow you can you can lay out some coyotes at at the time pretty unheard of distances just with 
flat trajectory and good speed. You take yep. a 50 grain varmint bullet, juice that baby up, sight that thing in two inches high at 100, and you're holding the hair. Yeah, basically, in those distances that they found out they were shooting at were uh, after it was shot and you were stepping it off. Yeah. Because it was before yep. rangefinders, yep. you know, or at least carryable rangefinders, you know. Yeah. I, I know Miles has got a rangefinder. It's this big. It's from Swiss World War II. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Honestly, really accurate. Those, yeah, it yeah they are. It is. Yeah, but, if you haven't seen uh, that. It's very cool. impractical. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably 30 inches. <laughs> they had them on tanks. Three inches you know? in diameter and you turn it sideways. You don't look through it like a telescope. It's sideways and then you line up you look through the view and you, you line up the images and when they become in line, then that'll tell you your distance. And it's Miles all mechanical. would have something like that. It, so. it, we <laughs> tested it against some bigger rangefinders and it's hmm. pretty remarkable. Wow. Yeah. Definitely gets you in the ballpark of a coyote. Yeah. Mm. So the 22250, the founder of the feast, if you will, just, I mean, iconic coyote cartridge and certainly needs to be discussed as one of the best. Uh, I think where it shines, flat trajectory, sending a, a, a bullet with enough mass that you get those authoritative type kills on a coyote. You know, you're, uh, they're not running off on mm-hmm. you usually. Uh, where it doesn't quite shine so much is in the wind at longer ranges. Those longer range shots and in high winds, you can only rely on speed so much. Yeah. But the bullets that, you know, typically go into 22250 factory ammo, they leave a little bit to be desired, I think. Yeah, and that's probably something we should bring up too. If you've made it to this point and and you think, well, I can do blah 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 when I hand load blah 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 in my twenty two fifty because it has a blah twist, eight twist. Remember, guys, we we're talking factory ammunition at this point. Yeah, with Sammy spec cartridges, we yeah. adhere to the Sammy specifications for cartridges. So that's what. Yes, we do. you're yeah. you're right. You can do things with your custom one wildcat cap. or custom yeah. barrel that yeah. you know we're we we're not even going to bring up. That's true. Yeah, plenty of wildcats out there. You know, the twenty two two fifty Ackley with an eight twist is about as cool as it gets. Yep. Um, but factory options are fifty grain V Max Superformance is doing four thousand feet per second at the muzzle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you went out and you you know, that's another thing for the twenty two two fifty, you can go to any store. I can go to Sportsman's Warehouse right now today. I could probably go to the Walmart and pick up a factory twenty two two fifty on the shelf. Uh, and that spans from 400 bucks to as much as you want to spend I yeah. mean, something in there. So ammo availability, always great. Rifle availability, great as well. And that factory line, the 50 grain super performance doing 4,000, that's... Uh, that's blistering. That is blistering. Yeah. I think another one that should be put in there just in its raw mass appeal, the 223 Remington. Yeah. Oh, you got to. That that would be my. Jed, why'd you light up? I think I don't, I just <laughs> man, I I like it. It's just it's, talk about my AR-15. It's easy to get components. Everything feeds. It functions. It's 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 an easy button for me. That's what I started yeah. with, and now it's it's getting tough to get away from. I I, I like it quite a bit. I did have one coyote uh, this fall get up on me, and luckily I was able to get another round in it. So. I I did build my six arc, so mm-hmm. you know one thing we haven't really talked about. But my thought process was, well, you can do some tournament hunts with coyotes. So my six arc was, you know, I'm knocking that coyote down yep. right now. So you know, if I'm doing a tournament hunt, I think in in the future I'm going to run that six arc just for the the guaranteed knockdown yep. performance. But man, the the two two three fifty three grain super performance, that's my go to. Yeah. Well, on inside of a quarter mile, inside of 300 yards or something, you probably don't need a whole lot, a whole lot more. Well, and I think too, you know, I just started the thermal thing the last couple of years, but before that, just day hunting with that thing, Jeff uh, Nimnick, he talked about it too. You know, like, like throwing a football, you know, there's muscle memory or shooting a shotgun just that came natural after shooting that load and, and that uh, rifle for so long just your lead i mean i'm not spectacular at leads but you see a coyote and you just you just kind of know where to hold after mm-hmm. doing it for so long so it's mm-hmm. it's going to be hard yeah. to pry me away from from that one well there's something to be said about that what you just mentioned that muscle memory you know because 
you could be cool, calm as a cucumber, everything's cool until oh, there's yeah. a coyote. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah so, you wouldn't think a coyote would give you like buck fever, but it's, <laughs> there is a legitimate yeah. like ah, here he comes, he's coming in. It worked. I put the right calls oh. together. He's he's here. So I would say for me on that note, a coyote is almost worse on the buck yeah. fever. One hundred percent. A yeah. deer, you know, most times sometimes they surprise you, but you you watch them and yeah, you get excited. But yeah. a coyote barreling into you running yeah, yeah. It's, and you're 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 matching wits against a, another predator yeah. i mean if we're get back to the, the primal. caveman primal instincts we're predators and you're yeah. matching wits against another predator so that's the to me that's the excitement the draw of it is like i outsmarted that little critter so mm-hmm. yeah there's right. some awesome options there between 223 the mass appeal everybody's got an ar-15 plenty of bolt guns out there and if, if you yeah if, if there's Jeff Nimnick, who's made a career of being an outstanding coyote caller, doesn't need anything more than a 223, mm-hmm. and that's something to be said about that. Um, I think he, he, he's mentioned before, hadn't he? He's tried some other cartridges, but his, his leads weren't just yeah. what he remembered, so he would miss some running dogs, and he'd go back to it, and, it, and it's... It's there. And if you've ever watched any of his he, videos, he's, he's <laughs> probably the best running coyote shooter in the yeah. country. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I, I mean, that's a bold statement, but I've watched a lot of coyote hunting videos and that guy is one of the best. Yeah. He's certainly better than I. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so g- before we go into the 22 cal stuff, let's jump back a little bit. Is there any 17 or 20 caliber cartridges that you want to include as maybe a, you know, a contender for best coyote cartridge well i think the 204 ruger in in certain areas has to be in that conversation sure has to be yeah you think the 17 yeah. hornet and some of the 17 rim fires and 17 fireballs and stuff probably a little on the small side i would think so if, if you're gonna put the best cartridge like in a specific geographical location i don't know if the, those for me yeah. are, are involved yeah. mm-hmm. well and that's probably something we should clarify if we're talking the best i don't need the best all around varmint cartridge or the best cartridge for colony varmints and predators i'm talking just coyotes and i'm not inc- you know not including wolves great dogs anything like that up or down on the game size just coyotes yep so yeah. but yeah i think the 204 deserves deserves some consideration just out of its again its speed its accuracy um you know i've shot it almost exclusively on colony varmints uh, out west with a 26 inch truck axle savage model 12 right bolt left port now you need to lay behind there Mm. and just it's it's there's nothing safe inside of depending on the wind 400 yards yeah yeah Yeah. and that's why i say geographical location there's some there's some places where you'd call coyotes where a long shot's not even an option Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. there the 204 ruger might be the best coyote cartridge sure yep Yep. i like it yeah and again where you can do a lot of the coyote calling and you can see them coming in you know, I think the windiest state in the Union, depending on the year, is South Dakota, North Dakota, you know, Montana and Wyoming's up there. Uh, anything on that northern kind of corridor northwest of us. Uh, maybe not the best option if you're up in there in the Dakotas or eastern Montana. Because, again, yeah. wide open prairie. Well, I would say maybe even coyote size. I mean, just sure, like yeah, you get up there. Seems like as you go south, yeah. the coyotes just get a little bit smaller, little too. Small. So. That's a good point. Yep. Definitely good point. So, 223. 22250. Now you got some new kids in town in the well, 22 I, caliber world. You going to save those till the end? I I don't know. I don't know when is the right time, but I have to throw out the 243. Yeah, I was going to go it, in it ascending order by caliber, but the 243 mm-hmm. similar to the 22250. It's just one of those staples. And lots of people have 243s uh, for oh, deer hunting. Deer so. gun. That, yeah. Well, yeah. To go against mm-hmm. what you said earlier, that was my do all. You know, I could yeah. I could go from deer spectrum down to prairie dog spectrum, and, and coyote nope. is just happily right there in the middle. Yeah. So yeah. Not yeah. even have to change for change rounds or change yeah. bullets if you know. Again, so, like, but <laughs> yeah, Judd, we had that podcast about your. You know, we talked about your two forty three. That was your first deer rifle. Did you shoot your first coyote with it? I did. I think actually my first three coyotes were with that, and. uh I don't know if any of those were hunting. Those were just kind of ranch coyotes, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, it was, I still remember when I shot my first coyote and you were talking about buck fever. Mm-hmm. I had deer hunted before that and I don't know why, but when I shot my first coyote, I was a mess. Just the leg shaking and I'll never forget that. It was so cool. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And 
Preston, we talked about this earlier. That 58 grain V Max in the 243, doing 39 and a quarter from a 24 inch barrel. That Speed is screaming. That's nearly 400 feet per second faster than the 75 grain V Max option in the Superformance Varmint. So between the 75 and the 58, if you're a 243 shooter, only going after coyotes, that's going to be flat. A little bit heavier, going to be you know have plenty of authority upon arrival at really any distance. Uh, going to be good in the wind because it's going so fast. A little bit heavier bullet, a little bit better BC, better drag, bigger frontal diameter. You sure, know, upon impact versus a twenty-two cal. Yep, might be something to consider if you got running dogs. If you're not having the best luck knocking them down, I bet mm. that does. Yeah, that is true. The two forty-three. Um, I can honestly say I've never shot a coyote with a two forty-three. But that's also because the only 243 we had in the family growing up was a Browning BLR. Yeah. So, wasn't, wasn't really out there <laughs> slinging it with that. Uh, it would have been cool if you were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On horseback. Yeah. Pull it out of the scabbard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, staying in that six millimeter vein, you've got six Creedmoor. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people, uh, uh, old street tater out there and the rest of the Oklahoma crew, they were big proponents of the six Creed for a while with, 87 grain V Max is doing dangerously Tate, fast. Tate mm. just posted a thermal video of one with six creed more than 87 grain V Max mm. on the run. Yep. Knocked them down. It was great. Yep. Well, and that's what I think the draw to that, like we talked about with the 243, is you get the heavier bullet, you're yeah. knocking them down. Really, at any range you hit a coyote, he is anchored when you're shooting a big six millimeter. And they're shooting the 87 grain bullet. A lot of people are good in the wind. And they're, again, with all that velocity, I mean, they're, they're shooting coyotes, obviously, uh, Tate and, you know, the Oklahoma crew, they're some of the best shooters in the world as far as precision rifle stuff goes. Um, but not just in that, you know, geographical area, everywhere else, the yeah. six Creedmoor, you got factory ammo options with the Varmint Express and the V-Match line, really a, 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 a sweetheart of a coyote cartridge. Yeah. That's what I set my wife up with her, her day set up for coyotes as a six Creedmoor Ruger Predator. And that's a big reason of it, you know. Seems like she always has her luck when I'm out of town, but that's an easy button for her. You know, you don't really have to worry too much at certain distances about drop and then the wind. It's just, it's easy for her, you know, point and shoot. So she really likes that setup. Yeah. And yeah. Darn and, effective. Yeah. And then, I mean, if we're, while we're still on the Creed, the six Creed more, the, the one Oh eight, I've shot, I had a match gun, a barrel on that I took off my match gun and put on a, a Savage model 10 and it shot one Oh eight lights out. And so. Uh, that's what I ran, and it's devastating to a coyote too. So, and you have the the long range performance there too with those. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we love to shoot coyotes in our lap. Sometimes they're not coming to your lap, and if you got to reach out there, six creed with any of these bullets, like you mentioned, Matt, even with the one hundred eights, a lot of long range potential. Eighty grain VT is going to be a home run. Though. Yeah. Oh, the yeah in the V match yeah. line, the eighty grain <laughs> bullet, it's got plenty of shape. You know, it's going to have a similar shape to our hundred eight grain match bullet. Mm-hmm going to pick up some speed with the lighter weight that might be one of my contenders as what i don't, might don't you dare take mine okay okay <laughs> uh, well uh, while we're on six millimeter maybe it's a good time for matt to talk oh, about yeah. that thing in yeah front of him, right matt, there. What, what do you, do you got? think what do you yeah, got there? so my primary uh coyote gun is a uh, it's old remington 700 long action and six remington ackley and i run 87 grain v maxes at a little over 32 pushing 3300 feet per second but and why do you uh, run 87s? Because that's it shoots bug holes. They, well, I don't. They I, just, don't th- I don't think your barrel twist will support. Yeah, the barrel twist it. is slow. Yeah. It's a it's a 10 twist. So I think a 105 A Max is the heaviest bolt I can mm, shoot out of that. Maybe. It, it does well. Yeah. Maybe when it had a 28 inch barrel, now it's got a 22 inch barrel because <laughs> I like shooting suppressed. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So a healthy charge of Varget, super temperature stable. Awesome little cartridge, and it, it the 87 grain VMAX is just stacked right on top of each other. So mm-hmm. that's my go-to gun. Um, like I said, light. Well, it's not light. Sorry. It's, it's a got a short bar- It's got a yeah. short barrel, but it's it's in a nice HS precision stock. Got a good trigger on it. And I clamp everything in a, in a tripod now. So when I'm hunting, when I do my stands, and that little 87 grain VMAX flips off the light switch. It's yeah. great. I've shot plenty of coyotes this year. Um, the farthest one was about 190 yards. Everything else has been closer because of how I set my stuff up, but I've shot at coyotes at 
unreasonable distances with the 87 green VMAX. The one time I did it was little to no win, and he was lucky because I parted his hair. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> had yeah. it been a little bit, you know, obviously we're, I didn't hit him, but had it been mm-hmm. a little bit more to the right, I'd have, I'd have killed a coyote at almost a thousand yards. Wow. That's with the 87 green VMAX. So. You know what? I think I'm a big fan. Uh, we grew up with a six Remington around. My old man shot one wasn't a actually improved version because that thing it just looks cool but maybe when that barrel's toasted out keep her around rechamber another one with an eight twist run those 80 mm. grain vts yeah. that that's a a good idea you already got the dies <laughs> so, you got the brass yeah i've got I've probably and, and got I, a barrel and i can spin off of another gun and rechamber it but yeah and i and i bring it up because most of us here love to tinker. I, I oh, yeah. say all mm-hmm. that stuff earlier about, you know, we're adhering to Sammy and whatnot, but. That's true. Individually, as <laughs> individual people, we're tinkering all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's a cool little pet project. You didn't really choose it. It just, that's yeah, what the barrel was on it. Yeah, yeah, it landed in my lap, but it's been, it's turned been out a good. great ride. It's been cool. So. Find the latest shirts, hats, hoodies, and accessories that you see here on the podcast and much more at HornadyGear.com. Awesome. Well, staying in the 6mm vein, 6 arc. How do you guys feel about that? Is that in the discussion? If you had a one and done best coyote cartridge, is that in your, you know, top few? For me, yeah. Is it? Absolutely. Okay, especially with the new VT load. With with the VT load and then... You know, we're in Nebraska. There's no magazine restrictions on coyotes or anything. I could put 27 rounds in there if I needed to. But, you know, uh, I've learned a lot about building ARs for miles and a lot of research on on my own. And I feel like I can build a pretty accurate AR-15. So I don't think I'm giving anything up, you know, by going to the semi-auto. And the 6 arc just fits right in there. Yeah. And again, that six millimeter, larger frontal diameter, a little bit more authority on target. Not a bad option. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, but, and the other thing too, I mean, if we're talking about this, I think I'm running 42 and a half grains of Varget. When you go to a six arc, you're 28 grains mm-hmm. and you can. 27. Yeah. So, I mean, if we're, if we get back to COVID times and you can't get powder, can't get all that stuff or it's harder to get, why yeah, not use that a cartridge? That consider, yeah, consideration. Well, and then you're you're getting you're giving up some performance, but at a lot less powder. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah, you don't get all the velocity when you compare it to a six Ackley or a six Creedmoor or some of the certainly a two forty three. Mm-hmm. Right. But you can fit it into an AR fifteen. So. Boom. Yeah. That's definitely a consideration. It fits in the AR, and you can make big, heavy, long, or you can make short and uber uber light, like Judd just finished his build here. Super lightweight. That's your. Is that your go to night gun now? No, you still doing not yet. It's my go to day gun, but just the way time works out, I have more time at night than I do during the day, so I haven't been able to get out with it. But yet. once he does his next competition, he'll move the thermal over, and yep. then that'll be yeah. a night gun. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the plan. So we'll see. Yep. Well, there's a couple more cartridges I want to talk about, and then maybe some honorable mentions. The two I wanted to mention are the new kids in town. Twenty two R twos. And the mm. 22 Creedmoor. Yep. And, uh, you know, for the, well, the 22 Creedmoor, as far as, uh, you know, Hornady's involvement with Horizon Firearms, Derek Ratliff and his team over at Horizon, one of the main reasons that they started building 22 Creedmoors over a decade ago was for coyote calling competitions. They needed to launch those really efficient bullets a lot faster. They were losing coyotes with the 22-250 running 50s and 55s because they just weren't getting anchored even if they got a bullet in them uh, at those extended ranges. They wanted the drag performance of those modern bullets, and the Creedmoor was a perfect platform. Now, as of 2024, the official uh, approved by Sammy Stamp. So you can get the 22 Creedmoor. Uh, factory loads are going to be in the 80-grain bullet, 80-grain ELD match doing 3275, but you could certainly hand load for it. Plenty of options there. And then our 22 arc, also new for 2024, spawning off the success of the 6mm arc. Going to fit in that AR-15. Going to launch those 62 grain VT bullets at 3,300 feet per second from a 24 inch. And that that really blurs the line between the 22 250 and the 22 arc. Because although it's going significantly slower, 
the bullets are significantly more efficient. So inside of traditional ranges, yeah, tit for tat, whatever, tomato, yeah, potato, constant. whatever. Sure. Uh, but you get past the quarter mile mark, you're at 500 yards, 600 yards, that arc, you know, with those more efficient bullets is going to take over and it's got the twist rate to support those really long bullets. Yeah, and, th and that's where, you know, I'd look at the comments like we talk about, I look yeah. at the YouTube comments and that's where I, I, I really want to hit home. When you make that comparison, that's 22 arc versus a Sammy 22 250. It's not your twenty two two fifty with a nine twist shooting seventy five, because that's that's just not what everybody can do. So yeah. it's it's cool. Twenty two arc sixty two versus twenty two two fifty fifty five grain V max, mm -hmm. which is just an accurate load, by the way. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's. I mean, the go to B and the D, the you know, the fifty or the fifty five thirty eight grains of H three eighty. That was the that was the magic pet load from you know way back in the day. Yeah, it's been around a long time, but that that's accurate. And that's I just want to throw that little point of clarification out there in case somebody wants to make that argument again. Yeah, well, yeah, we try to be as transparent as we can with that. Like, all of our cartridges that we've released here recently in the last 15 years, the cartridges that have, were pre-existing are just as good as they ever were. And if you have a custom setup that allows you to get that performance or better, awesome. That's Thumbs up. A, yeah, that's yeah. a one-off, though. Yeah, but we want to be Do able you. to go to yeah. the store yeah. and get it. Right. Uh, so, 22 cal. Are you guys leaning towards 22 cal as the best coyote cartridge? What do you think? Situationally for me. Okay. Yep. For night hunting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I. Th that's what I've used and have had success with, so that's what I'm yeah. sticking so to. Yeah, so for 22 Creedmoor and 22 Arc, you think 22 cal, it's in. 2024. It's in the discussion for best. Yeah, for night yeah. hunting with thermals especially. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a benefactor of Preston's AR building skills. So I've, it's currently a six arc, but I will have a 22 arc upper for it. If you can get that barrel out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll do a whole new upper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so we're going to go talk in, through these and some more. But the last one I want to mention before we kind of, we're not going to shift gears, but before I shuffle this up a little bit, the one I want to mention is the 6.5 Creed. The reason I want to bring that up it seems like everybody has a 6.5 Creedmoor. When you look at our rifle ammo sales, the number two sold SKUs are both 6.5 Creedmoor loads. So the 6.5 Creedmoor, it's, it's probably a flash in the pan, bad, it's never going never to yeah, catch never on. Stand. Uh, so yeah, until then, it's one of the most popular cartridges in the world and everybody's got one. There's nothing wrong with taking a 6.5 Creedmoor out. Judd, we talked about it earlier, but whether you're deer hunting or if you're going out specifically to hunt coyotes, there's nothing wrong packing along the 6.5. Yeah, until I built the 6 arc, the 6.5 Creedmoor shooting 143s, that was my coyote load. That's what I had set up for deer, well, and I just kept it for coyotes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where the credit really does belong, but we'll say it's Judd, but Judd may be the reason for the Varmin Express 95 grain VMAX 6.5 <laughs> Creedmoor load. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was all about that. Yeah, well, and it's a good, that one specifically loaded up, temperature stable propellant, super accurate, doing, is it 3,300 feet per second, I think? I can't yeah. recall. 32 or look it up. 30, it's, a, it's around there, yeah. I mean, it's it's cruising right along, and you know, the 6.5 Creedmoor, not historically known for blistering speed, because the 143s oh. and the 140s are doing, you know, about 2,700. Moderate speed with really good bullets. Yeah. 33. But 3,300, you know, mm. uh, when I was working in ballistics, I actually did the load development on that, so I pretty sure it was 3300 well judd appreciates yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, <laughs> coyotes and it, do not I do too. Yeah. it always shot well you know yeah. doing that development it always shot well now with the v match load Ooh. you got that 6.5 creedmoor you got a hunting rifle just take the 6.5 with you on a coyote hunt you won't regret it and uh there's plenty of performance to spare now some honorable mentions 257 roberts <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, i gotta say it touch order. blue make it true yeah <laughs> but you know i mean in the in the the twenties and thirties, uh, up into the forties, really, the twenty fives really had a good run before the two forty three became so popular in the fifties. The two forty three, obviously, yeah. as a, as versatile as it is, it deserves all the credit it gets. But for a while there, before the six millimeter craze, the twenty fives were really, really on top of the game. You had the two fifty three thousand, you had the two fifty seven Roberts, you had the twenty five six. 
and you had 75 grain bullets or even yeah. 60 grain bullets you know for the uh 25 35 was a yeah. you know a popular cartridge you know way before uh you know we're going into late 1800s early 1900s so you had a 60 grain bullet that was popular in that cartridge you could launch a 60 grain bullet real fast and then you start putting a you know good ogive on a bullet make a 75 hollow point you've got plenty of performance on a coyote um and again we're not this isn't the specific reason of the podcast but in that 25 cal world you had a pronghorn gun you had a white tail gun a mule deer gun and it was great for coyotes as well because you could load those 75s specifically in the 27 roberts 75 green v max you can get 34 to 3500 feet per second performance out of that thing with a hand load um, so that's pretty darn pretty darn good uh the 253,000, that one you know very history cartridge with the iconic 87 grain bullet doing 3000 feet per second so that was always a good option and then in the 25 out six um, that's one my old yeah. man shoots 75 v maxes at north of 3600 feet per second uh, and that's done safely that's not you know some yeah. red line standing on it over pressure load and as and as much as seth has given us a history lesson and some valid reasons why they're an honorable mention we have to bring up Seth's first deer rifle was a 257 Roberts. That's why it might have got the nod. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, yeah, and I shot my first coyote with it too. Uh, but it, it does deserve some merit. Yeah. And here in recent times, we're seeing some 25 cal resurgence in sure. the wildcat world. Mm. And I've seen 25 PRCs. We've seen 25 Creedmoors, 25 by 47 Lapuas. Uh, I mean, I've seen 25 out six improve, 257 Roberts improve, 30 degree, 40 degree, like a lot of good options in 25 yeah. caliber. Yeah, there really is. Is there any other honorable mentions? You know, I think the 25 cal stuff, the cartridges I mentioned are honorable mentions because they lack the mainstream support to really make them viable, uh, in my don't, opinion. Don't we have a, or didn't we have a one time a, a VMAX, a light grain VMAX for the 270? We did do a 110. I don't know if it was ammo. We make a bullet. But a bu- yeah, a bullet. Yeah. But yeah, if you were. It was for the 6.8 SBC though. Yeah. yeah. But, yep. but you could handle but, it in um, there. I'm sure yeah. there were a lot of guys that have 270 Winchesters that have shot a lot of coyotes. So hey. Golden West, that was the cartridge. Yeah. 174 grain ELD VT and the 300 PRC. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. I'm going to throw out 220 Swift here as well. Yeah, I got a that, good friend of mine that just lives and breathes 220 Swift. Yeah, well, and you, we did gloss over that one. When we talked about 22250, you could have just as well yeah, been talking. Yeah. Probably should have. Out of the, Yeah, talking about the 220 Swift. Triple and Deuce. Dude, the Triple really? Deuce is in there. The Triple Deuce Mag never really saw the mainstream acceptance as the original 222, but that would be another fine option. Uh, the 220 Swift is a unique one because we still load ammunition for it. There's still a demand enough for our, us to load ammo. And uh, the 55 grain V Max out of the Swift, what's the 3680? Yeah. No slouch. Nope. Hmm. That I mean, that's 22250 tip yeah. for tap. Yep. So hmm. great option there. Um, any other honorable mentions that you guys are thinking of? Anything bigger than 6.5? We mentioned the 270. I, I got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you're leading. Well, <laughs> no, leading I was just curious because now it's time to start. It, you it know? depends what's next to me and when I see a coyote. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I say, before the camera started rolling, we were talking about pretty much anything you have. If it's available and right at hand, yep. it's a, when you're hunting coyotes, it's, yeah. it's a coyote car. I almost shot one with a muzzleloader a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that he had a death wish. Well, he, yeah. He came he up no gave less me five than more seconds 50 and... yards, and we were cooking breakfast on the tailgate. Yeah. Yeah. He, he might have smelled breakfast. He might have. He might have. I don't know. I don't know if coyotes like Mountain House. <laughs> <laughs> Is a breakfast omelet or what was it? I don't, I don't know. know. That was a Chinese food. Yeah, it's like a low main noodles. Yeah, thing. Like that's eight thirty oh, in like the morning. Stuff. Hey, <laughs> I don't get. Bre- I don't. I don't. Get, I don't buy the breakfast mountain. Yeah. Houses, All so. right. So, real quick, we're gonna have to sum this up. Anybody got a? You could just say it right now. Favorite best coyote cartridge i i've voiced mine i think i'm sticking with the 223 53 grain v max it, it's what i know mm-hmm. but i'm gonna throw a second thing in here after having this conversation and i see it here looking at me again i think i have to make it a goal to take my blackout out with that 110 v max i've got a short barrel suppressed 300 blackout i gotta get a coyote yep. with that thing matt what are you thinking 
Um, I mean, while I do like that six Ackley, I'm leaning to a six arc. I've got, I went from having none of them to two of them in less than a year. I hope my wife's not watching this, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> that is just a great little cartridge and it has varmint, you know, mid-size game and match applications. So it's just six arc probably for a day gun and 22 arc for a night gun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Preston, what are you thinking? 22 arc for a night gun. I can agree with Matt on that. And then I would say day gun six creed more with the 80 grain VT. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a good option. Just anchors them. You yep. Know? yep. I think, uh, fast and flat. I'm in the market. Um, currently I've got an action and I will be having a barrel and a stock at some point. Uh, for this build, because what I think, if I had to pick one as this is the best coyote cartridge, I think I'm going to go 22 Creedmoor. And the reason I'm going 22 Creedmoor, I can shoot an 80 grain bullet, the same weight of bullet that you're shooting in the six Creedmoor with the VT. I can shoot an 80 grain bullet. I can get really flat trajectory. I can get great wind deflection numbers. I can get everything I want in a 22 caliber cartridge with with relatively low recoil compared to some of the bigger bore cartridges, sixes and six fives. So if I had to pick one as the best, I mean that that one fills a lot of the gaps right there. Twenty two yeah. creed more with a seventy five grain ELD match or an eighty grain ELD match. Maybe even a sixty two VT. I mean that would be really cool too. I can't would, argue with that. Yep. So I, think, I do want to throw this out here too. Since we were talking about the Oklahoma boys I think it should be known that I'm pretty sure it was Travis Stevens did a 6-7 PRC and loaded 80 grain VTs in it. He did. Just so, did so did Tate. <clears throat> did he? Yeah. Yes. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. What did they call it? I can't remember. I don't right. know what they called it. Just a ridiculous amount of power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slight overkill. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. 22 Arc, 223 Remington, 6 Creedmoor, 22 Creedmoor. I think yep. we're all in the same arena. Man. Yeah. But, man, there is... No bet. Any of the cartridges we talked about and a bunch we didn't talk about, still great options. And just like Judd and Matt mentioned across the table here, sometimes it's the gun that's sitting next to you is the <laughs> yeah. best one. Yeah. Awesome, well, guys. Well, would it change anything if, you know, it certainly would if you had to put it in an AR. You know, is there, if you had to put it in an AR, is there a certain cartridge that would maybe get the nod from you? For me, 22 arc. 22 arc. Yep. Judd, are you sticking to your guns? I like it. All right. Just and that's like you okay. Said, yeah. You know it. You know the yeah. lead. Yeah. You got it all. You, yep. you, no, yeah. no other word. than my answer being right, all the other ones will work just fine. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. <laughs> More right. Yeah. And yeah. Matt, you already said the six arc, which fits yeah. right there in that AR-15. Yeah. And yeah. you can't go wrong. And, you know, Hornady, we've got the bullets. We've got the ammo for you. Uh, so if you're a hand loader or if you're buying factory stuff, Hornady's got a solution to get you out there. Calling coyotes. Now is the time. I mean, they were hyper responsive. On yeah. this last trip I was on, they were coming to the call. We were calling in doubles and triples. Hmm. So it's and just, there, there are plenty. Yeah. So, oh yeah. You know, there, there really is. Yeah. There's an obligation to, to hunt them. You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, pelts really aren't worth anything. Um, but whether we like it or not, this obligation to hunt them is still there as yeah. a conservationist. It's a thing. And darn it. If it isn't one of the funnest things you can do with a gun. Yep. Uh, anything else guys about. The best coyote cartridge? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Absolutely. Yep, you definitely do got to let us know. One, we're curious. We want to know what you guys think. And two, it does help the podcast out. Just, I'm guessing there's some sort of algorithm-based thing where we start getting more comments on an episode. It just, by nature, gets more views and uh, helps us out a ton. And we like the interaction. So, yeah, I do appreciate that. Anything else? From across the table. I'm ready to get out there. Yeah. Let's, all right. Well, it's Tuesday. Let's go. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful <laughs> let's, night. Let's That's go. why I have the thermal. I can go after work. Well, let's get some we, lunch and go right now. Before we sign off on the podcast, your beautiful bride laid one out last night. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty cool. So, yeah. Got out with thermal, did some calling, you know, being breeding season. We did, uh, you know, some howls, some different submissive sounds, and I didn't get any response. Tried some some uh, rodent distress, came back to the uh, a fight sound, and yeah, after I played the fight sound, it was a minute, and we had coyotes running in, which called it, in a pair. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting how you can call, make different sounds for twenty minutes, 
and then you hit the right one and yeah. there they yeah. are. It, yeah. It was pretty yeah. neat. Yep. But it's, yeah, it's that time and it's really nice for you to be able to just run out from north of the house. You hear them howling, grab yeah. the gear and get out there. <laughs> Made that sound purchase worth it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome guys. Well, thanks again. And I enjoyed the conversation. Everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this maybe controversial conversation about the best coyote cartridge. Like we mentioned, we've got the bullets, we've got the ammo, and whether you're shooting a 204 Ruger or you're hunting with your 6.5 Creedmoor, we've got something for you. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.